Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope that you won't uh, fall asleep. Uh, so I will try to make my presentation uneven, like you know, jumping from here, from here, and uh, so you don't, uh, you will have to stay vigilant all the time. Uh, so my presentation is about uh, creating. Is it? <laughs> uh, it's cre about creating plugins for IDE Pro. Uh, that's the outline. We'll talk about the why we need plugins at all. Second, uh, we'll talk about the API. You, if you already wrote some uh, plugins, you know that they are good stuff and really ugly things. And uh, then we will look at some uh, uh, simple, uh, sample plugins. And I hope to have some free time at the end. Uh, to answer your questions if you have. There's an online uh, copy of this presentation, uh, so you can download, uh, if you have your laptop and you cannot read something, you can go and see it uh, online. So uh, ID is uh, an interactive thing, and uh, it's a, programmer th a programmable uh, disassembler. There are three ways of automating things uh, in ID is that you have the macros, the keyboard macros, Unfortunately, they are available only in the text uh, version of IDA. Uh, there are also the scripts and uh, the script language called IDC, and there are plugins. We'll talk about uh, the last one uh, because uh, the other things, uh, the keyboard markers, there is nothing to tell about them. They, are, they exist, but for sure, unfortunately, only in the text mode. And about the IDC language, well, I can say, as you can, I think that more, many of you, many bad things about the language because it's a, just a point. In fact, I wanted to write uh, a small uh, parser. I wanted to exercise, uh, to make an exercise. So I, write a, I wrote a small uh, language interpreter. It, it's not a good thing. And you know that it lacks many modern features like uh, arrays, structures, and uh, hashes. All the stuff is not, uh, it's not there. And uh, it's again, it's yet another language to learn. So, and I know that many of you use either Python and uh, others. Is, I think that now we have uh, Python, Ruby, and many other uh, scripting languages available in IDA, in IDA. I'm sorry, I tell, sometimes I say IDA, sometimes I say IDA. But unfortunately, we cannot uh, just dump uh, this language uh, because there are some useful IDC scripts. Uh, and uh, we have to continue to support it. Maybe in the future we will have uh, some provisions uh, for seamless integrating uh, of other language, scripting languages like uh, Python or uh, something like that. So it will be maybe available out of the box, but uh, I, I cannot may I make any promises yet. And one more thing, and my slide doesn't say it. Uh, it's a really slow, a really uh, limited language. And you cannot do everything in IDC, uh, you can do in IDA, IDA. So if you are serious into uh, using IDA, IDA and uh, uh, reverse engineering many things, you will have to use uh, the real API, the plugin API. And I know that uh, many of you uh, say, oh, it's really difficult stuff, you know, you, to write a plugin, you have to le learn many things. Yeah, that's, uh, this is correct. You have to know how to program in C or C++. But on the other hand, it's not that difficult. Uh, in, uh, with the, uh, this API, you can, have, you can have access to all subsystems in ID. You can uh, write uh, your processor models, uh, file loaders. Uh, you can improve the analysis. Uh, add user interface uh, stuff and other things. So yeah, many, many things you can do. Uh, in my presentation, I will show you how to write these small plugins. It's not that difficult. The only problem being the API itself because it's, uh, it's uh, a collection of different uh, coding styles, different um, uh, naming conventions, and uh, maybe it reflects my coding preferences over time. I started to write idea, idea, I think that it was in 1990, and uh, now it makes uh, 18 uh, years. So, of course, uh, I, I evolved, I hope at least, uh, that uh, my coding became better over time. 
so there are some very old stuff uh, that maybe doesn't make sense today or uh, something that it's difficult to understand. But overall, we try to improve things and uh, to add new, uh, more intuitively uh, understandable things uh, in the SDK and improve it all the time. Second, uh, we have uh, the SDK, and the SDK comes with the, uh, let's say, many, many uh, modules, processor modules, uh, plugins, uh, file loaders. Uh, overall, you have more than 1,700, uh, 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 170,000 lines. So it's, uh, you have plenty of source code to, 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 to copy from and uh, to learn. Uh, of course, the API is very uh, big. Uh, it's more than 1,000 uh, functions, so it takes some time to learn. I think that it's the same with IDEA itself. You take an IDEA, you give it to a, 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 to a new guy uh, who haven't seen it before, and uh, at the first, it's really uh, intimidating. Like, uh, you have so many things. Um, I don't know where to go, what button to press, and... Uh, um, Unfortunately, uh, it's difficult to give uh, an answer saying, you know, in either you run this, you do this, and after you get a result. You cannot uh, say it like this because the result depends on what you want to achieve with either. Maybe you want to find something. Maybe you want to uh, reverse engineer the whole uh, application. Maybe you are looking for uh, vulnerabilities. There are many, many uh, things you can do with either. And uh, all this depends on, the, on your goals, on your methods, on your uh, target processor. So, so unfortunately, uh, the learning curve is very difficult, very steep at the beginning with IDA, and it's the same with API. Um, normal programs, they are written in a very simple, uh, in the following way. First, there is a design phase. We make a nice design, maybe with UML uh, diagrams, all that stuff. Uh, we understand the logic. Then we have clear understanding of what we need to do. And only then we start to implement things. And after we debug it, and we have something, up, an application. Unfortunately, it's not the case. Or fortunately, I don't know. It's not the case with either. Uh, at the beginning, it started like a, a disassembler, a very simple disassembler. And, uh, if you ask what is assembly is, it's, uh, it's a very simple thing. It's just uh, you take an uh, opcode and you convert it into a uh, mnemonics like uh, EB, I mean, jump. I don't remember, by the way, I don't remember all those opcodes. Uh, the previous presentation was showing some opcodes and asking us what, what this opcode means. I am very bad with this. That's why one of the reasons why I uh, created IDA, because I could not understand all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Ida is uh, started with, uh, as a very simple uh, disassembler, and it was uh, evolving naturally. Uh, fortunately, uh, the base stuff, like the database and the, um, the way that uh, the information is presented in the database, was good enough, so we, keep, we kept the same architecture all the time, so the, the architecture of Ida is the same as uh, from the beginning, it has not changed. But we were forced to add new things to, to IDA, to IPI, and uh, that's why uh, it's, it's a collection of uh, mixed stuff. So uh, I tried to come up with a list of some unforeseen uh, things we had to add to IDA. Like, uh, you know that a byte is always 8 bits. Unfortunately, it's not always the case. There are some processors where addressable quantities are not 8 bit. Well, the next thing I did not foresee, and it's my fault, that uh, the graphical interface would be something really nice and the uh, way to go. That's why I uh, stayed with the text interface for long years. Then there were bytecode machines. There were 128-bit uh, computers. Uh, a, re a recent addition to uh, IDA is uh, this multiple chunk functions. Uh, they were not existing before. and. Uh, if you asked me in 1995, let's say, I would say, you know, it's, it never happens. The function is just, it starts there, and, and there it's one chunk. And uh, unfortunately, it's not okay. I think that all assumptions you can make about the code, they are all violated, especially today with all this uh, obfuscation stuff and uh, 
now we can say that if we have a move, the next instruction, the next byte must be an instruction. Either make this assumption, so it, when it disassembles things, it goes like this, move, move, add something, so it, it's a linear code execution. But unfortunately, it's not the case with obfuscated code because there might be an exception, thrown, and you never return. So again, something uh, violated. And uh, the adversary is a human being now. So it's not like uh, Ida uh, had a shortcoming and uh, we just add something to Ida and it uh, will solve the problem. It won't because uh, as soon as we uh, add something like a, a rule or something, a, make a Ida more complex to understand this particular obfuscation pattern, the adversary will come up with a new thing until they will say, Okay, now let's say, uh, I, I will give an example, an old example, but still, uh, we have a call instruction. When we have a call instruction, uh, and if the call returns, it usually it returns to the next byte, to the following byte. So Ida thinks, okay, we have a call, the next thing must be an instruction. And it uh, disassembles, happily disassembles, continues to assemble all this stuff. And what if uh, the called function is a special function that does not return to the next byte, but it always returns, for example, let's say, four bytes further. Then all this, uh, the disassembly is wrong. You have these junk bytes inserted, either tries to uh, analyze them, and uh, you are out of sync, and uh, nothing works. So you can say, and, uh, and you would be right, that either cannot handle it. Yes, either cannot handle these things, but on the other hand, Either it can be fine-tuned or configured to handle this stuff, and it can be handle many things like this. Uh, uh, I'm kind of done diverting from the main thing. I will return to this stuff, and I will talk about it later. Anyway, another thing is that the debugger. Uh, I would never think that the debugger would, I would, we would add the debugger to, to IDA. It's uh, something really, it has a hack to add it the graph view and other stuff. So anyway, uh, the, the, the thing is that, yes, uh, API is a collection of mixed things, but uh, it happened like this because it was a naturally evolving platform. If someone comes up with a new uh, disassembler or a reverse engineering platform that can handle things better, why not? But fortunately, unfortunately, that's what we have today. And uh, things that uh, we can say uh, for the future, things that uh, many, uh, we, we, get some uh, we got some requests uh, in these uh, directions. I'm not saying that we will do all this thing, uh, but uh, just uh, something that we would not uh, even think about having uh, multiple processors, input files, multiple users uh, per database. Uh, strangely enough, uh, this request of having multiple users per database, so you kind of you have a server and you have multiple users connecting to the server and uh, working on the same application, reverse engineering, it happens quite often. But if you think about it, it doesn't make much sense. Do you have a multi-user version of MS Word or Notepad? Like you have a file on the server and multiple users uh, edit the same file at the same time. You don't because it, it's just uh, it's it's impossible to handle it. It's uh, because there are so many too too many things happening at the same time, and uh, it would be just a mess. Uh, multiple debugging sessions per debugger server. By the way, it will be implemented in the next version. Multiple analysis threads. All that stuff. I will. Uh, I don't say that we will uh, implement all this stuff, but just uh, uh, trying to show you that uh, things evolve in the directions we cannot foresee. Or we can foresee, but we cannot implement it at once because it would take too much time. Now about the good stuff. Uh, IDA itself is a modular thing. So we have a kernel and we have these uh, different models, the loader models, uh, processor models, plugins. Uh, so you can improve things with IDA. This is a very, the, the best point of IDA, that you can add things to it and you can improve things to it. I know that all of you using IDA, uh, got, got, I, I'm sure that you got frustrated on IDA saying this stupid program does not understand this or doesn't do this the correct way. And so on. It's perfectly normal. 
you are frustrated because you are trying to solve a problem and the tool, instead of being helpful to you, it's kind of uh, hinders from doing the right thing. Unfortunately, we cannot handle all the cases, and so you will have to do things yourself uh, to program a bit to make uh, either really useful for you. Uh, I will just uh, tell you a little bit more about uh, the architecture and the, how the information is stored on the database, so you will understand the next slides uh, much, uh, much easier. Uh, the database, there are four files. The B3, this is the most interesting file because it contains the most inter information like names, commands, and other stuff. Type information, uh, temporarily is kept there as also. Also, uh, the next file is called the flags file. Uh, for each byte of the program, ID allocates a 32-bit value which describes each byte. If it's a code or data, if there's a name attached to it, if it has a comment, how the operands are represented, and all this stuff in, is uh, encoded in this flags byte. Uh, the next file is called name pointers. Well, for the moment, we just uh, ignore it because it's technical detail. And uh, the last file is called type library. And uh, the type library has the information about the function prototypes and other stuff. So these four bytes, uh, these four uh, files, I'm sorry, they comprise the database and um, uh, it stores all the information in these files. So if you, write to, if you want to write a plugin, uh, we'll do it uh, this way. Each plugin has a descriptor, and the descriptor has it, uh, pointers to three functions. The first function is called initialize. As the name implies it initializes the plugin. Uh, the next, uh, ne then we have the termination function, and the function to invoke the plugin, that, that, that does the real stuff the, to run the plugin. Uh, we also specify the name of the plugin and maybe the hot key that is uh, attached to the plugin. So this information, this uh, description block never changes. You can say uh, maybe the, yeah, sometimes you change the flags, but uh, this is something you can uh, you may uh, ignore for the moment. So about the first function, uh, when you have a plugin, your plugin will do something for you for your, for your particular situation. If you work with uh, obfuscated uh, Windows applications, you are not interested uh, in uh, a Spark model or something like that. So uh, the first question uh, your plugin should check is uh, the first uh, parameter is if the current processor is supported by the plugin. If the, the next question is about the file format, maybe you are interested in the text mode and other questions. But all this is optional, so... Um, we can say that uh, in a very abstract way, uh, the initialization function should check if the, the plugin is compatible with the current database, and if it's not, it should say, no, I don't, I'm not do, going to work with the database. Otherwise, you say, yes, uh, I want with the database, uh, you return the OK code. Uh, the next thing, if your plugin is useful, if it's an interactive plugin, then uh, there will be uh, there must be a way to invoke it, to start it. Like uh, either you, uh, you will see your plugin in the plugin submenu, or your plugin may also add uh, any, um, uh, any menu item to any uh, uh, menu in IDA. For that, you use this uh, add menu item function call. Sometimes it's better to create uh, your plugin so it's fully automatic. It doesn't require any user interaction. For that, you use uh, you can hook to different uh, events, to different notific uh, notification points. Uh, you can uh, intercept. Uh, there are many various events. Uh, I tried. To, I just gave you some uh, uh, names here, but I think that it's better to go to to check the. Uh, other files and the uh, SDK to have better idea how it works. But anyway, the, uh, the thing is that you can uh, hook to event and create your callbacks and ID will call you a plugin uh, when something happens. So all this stuff is very long. To keep it short, here's the source code of very simple plugin that prints only hello world on the screen. 
you see that it's uh, very simple. At the end, we have the description. It's always more or less the same thing. Uh, the function, the run function will be called when the user uh, selects the plugin from the menu. And the initialization function returns plugin OK, saying that it will work with any IDB. So if you were afraid to write, a, to create a plugin for IDA, you see that it's not that difficult. Maybe some difficulties, you will have some difficulties with setting up the environment, comp compilers, and the stuff. But uh, again, that this is something you do once, and after you are, you are set up, and uh, everything works well. Uh, the first plugin does not work that useful. It was just printing uh, Hello World on the screen. So let's say the next one. Uh, not that useful neither, but uh, just showing you something else. Uh, this plugin, you know that uh, when you press Alt-X, it asks first if you want to save the database or not. Imagine you don't want this question asked. This plugin handles the, the job. It will just, um, what it will do, as soon as it starts, it uh, will switch either to the batch mode. You see that it says batch equal to one. And after, it will close the window. So this is how you close uh, the uh, Either without asking any questions. In fact, this plugin again is just a simple uh, illustration. Uh, it's not useful because uh, you, if you didn't know, you can keep the shift click. Uh, sh if you shift click on the Windows Close button, uh, I don't want to ask any questions. Now uh, let's turn on to more interesting things. Uh, uh, imagine you want to find uh, something. But it's not in one database. You have multiple databases, uh, let's say 10 or even 100, and you want to make a search in all these databases. Doing it manually, it's tedious and it's uh, really um, cumbersome, so it's better to write a plugin. Uh, we can, uh, you, oh, I, one way is to write a plugin, and uh, Let's, uh, the question is, let's try to find a function, let's say, in, uh, in many databases. Since function can be compiled uh, and uh, linked in at different addresses, we cannot use uh, simple binary search. So we'll, use, uh, we'll have to create a signature file, first of all, and then we'll uh, run either with a plugin that will uh, load the signature file, uh, try to find uh, the, the function. If it finds, uh, it will um, log the result or quit uh, or uh, switch to interactive mode, anything you want. Otherwise, it will uh, silently quit, and uh, this way you will be able to call the, uh, all this stuff from a batch file and uh, run it for all databases. I'm sorry? Ah. Uh, these are the names of the utilities uh, that can be used to create signature files. And they are available from, uh, with, with, they come with IDA. They come with IDA, maybe uh, you haven't uh, heard about them. It's called, uh, they are called FLIR utilities. And this is our plugin. I, I skipped the description part, the include file, so I just uh, uh, gave you the meat of the plugin, or only the thing that uh, the, the code that does the real thing. Uh, please note that we don't have any the run function here because we will do everything in the init function, initialization time. We'll do everything, and if we find something, then we will kind of, we'll stop. We will uh, we'll display a message on the screen. Otherwise, we will uh, make IDA stop. You see that uh, what we do here. Uh, first of all, we check that, that if there are any options for us. If there are some options, it means that uh, either was called in a special mode for us. We don't want either to to, to do all this stuff when uh, in normal uh, so when when you want to analyze a, a file in an interactive mode. This plugin should not intervene. So that's why we check the plugin options first. If there are some options in the command line for us, then we apply a signature file to the database. We, we, then we wait for the analysis to finish, to finish. And after that, we check if there were some matches. If there are some matches, 
we print the information saying found that number of matches. Otherwise, so we just quit. We don't do anything. So uh, what happens is that either has even no chance of displaying any windows on the screen. It will just dis disappear from the screen. And this is a good thing because uh, this can be used from a batch file. You can run this so from batch file and run the things. And, and this is the file. This is a uh, command line you have to use to run your plugin. You see that this minus O uppercase, the name of the plugin, SID, SIG, uh, colon, and the parameter. This way, we run IDA for all databases we have, and uh, we ask to do something with all databases. This pattern can be used not only to search for something, but for many other things. You can uh, look for a specific comment. You can look for uh, uh, you can look for uh, checksums. You can look for you can write a vulnerability scanning on to, on this base. Your plugin does uh, searches something. If it finds something, it prints as your uh, logs the results. Otherwise, it just continues. You know that IDA used many uh, rules uh, during the analysis. Unfortunately, uh, the built-in rules, they are generic, and they, uh, they, uh, sometimes you can come up with better rules. And you could say, OK, why IDA did, did, didn't do this? Because uh, we could not add this uh, a rule uh, in the list of uh, uh, generic rules, because it would ruin something, some disassembly in some cases. So in these cases, you have to do things yourself, and you have to um, create a plugin. Uh, there are the following approaches, four different things. The first thing, you do it manually. You write, either you do it really manually, like pressing the hotkeys, either you write a script, either you write a plugin, and uh, you run the plugin manually. This is uh, how most plugins work. But uh, this is uh, manual work because it, it means that it's slow and uh, sometimes you forget to run your plugin on uh, something like that. So it's better to use uh, the next three uh, approaches. When you make your plugin automatic, it's always pays off because uh, then uh, it will just uh, stay in the background waiting for something and uh, doing things for you automatically. Uh, one way is uh, to wait for the file to load, and at that time, you scan the database and find some interesting patterns and uh, change something in the database. Second approach would be to wait for the analysis to finish, and only then the scan to scan. There are situations when the first makes, uh, approach makes sense, and the situations when the second approach makes sense. But the best uh, approach is to hook the events and to improve things on the fly. This is the best thing you can do, because um, if you do it at the beginning, maybe it's too early. If you do it at the end of the analysis, maybe it's too late because you already missed uh, many things and uh, let either go the wrong direction. Let me show you an example. The iPhone binaries, uh, this is uh, something uh, relatively new stuff. Uh, they use this instruction. If you don't know this instruction, it doesn't matter very much because it's, uh, it's just an instruction that is used as the first instruction of many, many functions. IDA doesn't know about this thing. So, and because of that, it misses many functions in iPhone binaries. Let's write a plugin that will address this shortcoming. What it will do? It will check for this opcode in the ARM binaries, and as soon as it finds them, it will mark them as the beginning of function. This plugin will be full automatic, so it, will, it can stay in the background and uh, never bother you, and uh, just, just uh, makes the analysis better for you, the listing is better. This is a plugin. It's very simple. What it, do, it does, there's a loop. You see that the for loop. It goes, it searches for the pattern. As soon as it finds it, it says auto make procedure. You see that create a procedure at that address. It's a very simple uh, plugin, and uh, the same pattern can be used for any pa pa for any byte sequences. Not only for this particular instruction, but you can improve. Uh, uh, you can add many other the uh, the byte sequences as well. 
And you see that the plugin works at the beginning, at the initialization time, and after it doesn't do anything. And it even unloads itself from the memory because it, it's not used anymore. So you see that uh, this slide is not that useful because it just throws in a function uh, that starts with this uh, UXTB uh, instruction. That was the first approach. When we do something at the beginning, the second approach to do something at the end, it does. You do like this. You wait for the uh, analysis empty to be uh, analysis queue to be empty. At that time, you know that the analysis has finished, and you do something like adding uh, improvements and uh, changing something in the database. This is a pattern. I, I, I don't want. I don't. I won't stop at this in detail. Uh, later, you can uh, look at the slides uh, on the website or uh, uh, study them at your leisure. And now, the most powerful uh, way of doing things, we do things on the fly. Usually, we hook on the emulation uh, event. We try to recognize something, and if you recognize something, we improve the listing at the current address. So this is a very high level, abstract level of uh, representing things. Uh, we look at the current instruction. If it's uh, our case, we do something with the listing. To be more concrete and to give you an example, uh, let's try to, to create a uh, let's create a plugin that will. Uh, find the return instructions in, uh, for the ARM processor. The problem is that uh, the ARM processor has many different encodings for the same instruction. They are even uh, called differently. It can be simple return. It can be BXLR, which means, again, return, because uh, uh, the ARM processor does not store the return address in the, on the stack. And they, it works slightly differently. You can pop the PC, the program counter, from the stack, Sometimes they do still, <laughs> I'm sorry, sometimes they, they still um, save the program counter on the stack and so on and so on. Sometimes it's the return instruction even encoded as two different, uh, two, two separate instructions. So our plugin will detect this. So our first function is to recognize the pattern. You see that here you have to uh, check, uh, verify that we have the uh, the required instruction, we check for the BX, we check uh, for, here we check only for BX, I see, for this BX and the pop uh, sequence. And if, the, if you find the pattern, then we improve the listing. Improving the listing, uh, there are many different ways of doing it. You can rename things, add comments, patch database, change the operand type. Well, depending on the situation, you choose uh, what, whatever you want. And in our case, we will just add a small comment saying that it's a return instruction. So what do we do? We check that the flags specify that there are no comments attached to the current address. And if this is uh, not the case, we will uh, add the return, the return comment. Well, since uh, our plugin was uh, not very sophisticated, I try to keep it simple. It just uh, adds small comment at like this at the end. Nothing really sophisticated. In fact, uh, there are many events you have you can hook to, and uh, and they can be used to improve uh, many things in IDA. The first, the main, the main uh, event to hook to is uh, the emulation event. The, the, our previous plugin used that. Uh, that event can be used to recognize some different patterns and uh, to do something with the uh, 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 database. Uh, by the way, the next version will also add uh, events for cross references. Uh, your uh, plugin could check if the instruction is. Uh, a sane instruction that makes sense. Otherwise, you can, your plugin can say, do not create this instruction. Or it can many, do many other things, like uh, create data items, uh, 
there are many things to improve things. Anyway, to perform the final pass, change the byte value, and uh, other things, other things, other things. You see that there are many events in IDA, but still they are not enough to, uh, uh, to do everything, to, um, to replicate uh, everything that IDA does to the database, because there are some uh, events, some, uh, some, some, something that happens, and you cannot do anything with it, and uh, it will just go in unnoticed. But anyway, so that we can continue with this as well, because it's not that important. One more plugin sample that might be more, uh, more uh, in, not, not, I'd say not, not more interesting for you, but uh, something that uh, closer to you. Uh, the plugin will hook to the rename event, and if the name, uh, if the new, new name starts with this prefix, it will convert, automatically convert it to Unicode. It makes sense this, since names starting with this prefix usually mean that uh, we have a Unicode string at that uh, address. Again, the plugin is very, very simple. What we do is just, uh, there's some scaffolding, like you have to retrieve the arguments from the stack and other stuff. Otherwise, the, the, the most important lines are the if, if we compare the name and its equal, then we create a string, make a key string at that address, and uh, we specify the type, it's a Unicode string. So. Unfortunately, I don't have the slides here with me to, uh, how to, how to uh, show you how to handle the obfuscated code and other stuff, but again, it's doable uh, because you can intercept uh, instruction creation, and as soon as you see that the created instruction do not make sense or you recognize a pattern, you change the analysis how it goes, you, uh, you destroy the wrong instructions, you may even patch them out, uh, you remove them, and uh, you continue the right way. Ah, yes, and uh, this slide shows the rest of the plugin, but uh, there's nothing special. Uh, at the initialization time, we uh, register our callback function, and at the termination time, we remove uh, the callback function. So that's the two things we have, and uh, the, the, this slide shows how our plugin works. You see that's pretty simple, but unfortunately you have to uh, uh, write things uh, in, um, in C++. That's why maybe uh, we will uh, still, kind of will, uh, I don't know if it will happen soon or not, uh, but uh, having all this stuff in uh, stuff in uh, Python or Ruby or in Perl, uh, maybe it will be much more interesting for you because uh, I know that uh, most of you use uh, these languages today. Uh, C, C++ are, I wouldn't say that dying but languages, but still they are very old and. Uh, things are done in a more elegant way when you have a scripting language like Python and other stuff. And I don't know if I'm uh, late or not. No, that's okay. So, I uh, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free, to, feel free to ask. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I would say I would return to the same to to, to the thing that I showed you. Uh, let me show you, find the slide. This slide. This is the pattern I would use for uh, obfuscated code. Um, you recognize the pattern, the obfuscation pattern, and uh, you you do something with it. It's a very generic way of answering the question. But I think that it's the best way to do it because. Uh, you handle things as they come. 
it's not like you scan the database and uh, you do things, uh, but because uh, the, the application may uh, keep uh, its parts in the encrypted form and, uh, and uh, if you just scan them, you scan only the decrypted uh, bytes. And uh, with this pattern, you will ha handle all of them uh, on the fly as they happen. Of course, you will have to elaborate uh, how rec you recognize the patterns. This is uh, something that uh, depends on the obfuscation methods. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I, I know that uh, it's not uh, the answer maybe you would expect, uh, because again, you need something practical and working. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. The cool stuff for? Ah, for the, for the, for the next version. Uh, yes, thank you for your question. <laughs> it's a very good question. It allows me to, to answer all these questions and say, oh, we have many stuff. <laughs> um, yes, uh, the next thing, it, I think that it will be uh, released pretty soon. Uh, what we will do first is that uh, there will be better uh, uh, debugger support. There will be uh, new debugger modules. iPhone, we have a debugger for iPhone, Symbian. Um, in addition to the things that we had before, like Linux, Mac, uh, Windows applications. Second thing is that uh, multi-threaded applications will be handled much better in the debugger. Before, there were problems with them because I was supposing that it's kind of a uh, single-threaded thing. And as soon as you single step, all threads were frozen. They were suspended by IDA. And this was posing problem with multi-threaded applications. So there will be more controls like suspend the thread, resume a thread, uh, check the thread step, and stuff. The debugger, the server itself will be multi-thread as well. So you will be able to connect to it from many different uh, IDA copies. There will be a new uh, PDB plugin that will handle uh, almost everything from the PDB files. So you will get uh, names, types, uh, all that stuff. Uh, the, the listing is much, much better, I can tell you this, uh, especially for the decompiler. Um, because the decompiler uses this type of information very, very heavily, and uh, it really helps. Speaking of the types, they will be, we will release um, the utility to create type libraries yourself. Before, it was not available, and uh, you, so you will have uh, these type libraries. You will be able to create them and change them and all that stuff. There will be more events, like uh, I showed you that there will be events to create cross-references uh, uh, and other stuff. By the way, we will uh, also publish the source code of all the debuggers. I know that our debuggers, there will be some, maybe some, not problems, but again, some uh, anti-debugging tricks and other stuff, and we cannot cover all of them. So you will have the source code, and you can play with it. You can recompile, recompile your uh, debugger servers the way you want. Uh, well, there will be then uh, new signature files and all that uh, stuff. And I hope that there will be less frustration using the next version because we'll, we fixed all bugs you reported to us. In general, we, in general, we try to fix everything you, you report. So you have a bug, you send it to us, and we fix it, uh, let's say, uh, as soon as we, could, we can. And usually it takes uh, one, two days. In some cases, it's more, but uh, in general, do not be afraid to send us a back uh, report. As soon as we can rep uh, reproduce it, it will be fixed, and you will get uh, a, fixed, um, a fixed update uh, immediately, your personal copy uh, in your ma mailbox. Uh, well, that's how what I remember like this. Uh, that's, uh, Yeah, maybe there will be some uh, provisions to make uh, IDA easier to uh, integrate with this Python and other uh, scripting languages. Yeah, but this is something to consider. It's not implemented yet. 
uh, in uh, one more thing, I just remember, remember now, uh, you know that uh, the SDK, this API, plugins, all that stuff, uh, we say no, it's uh, you are at your own, you implement something, we don't provide any support because it uh, depends on, it's, it's a really difficult, it's a tough uh, thing to do because uh, there might be a subtle bug in your code and you say it doesn't work, I don't know why, it crashed and so on. Yes, we still officially do not support, but uh, again, if you have a problem, with your plugin and uh, you can kind of isolate it, uh, make it simple and uh, you can share this code with us, no problems, send it to us, we'll try to help you. So if you have a problem with plugin development and you have a problem, and tell us and we'll try to, to come up with a solution. Okay, no more questions? Okay, great, thank you for your attention.